How many times have we been in circumstances where it looked like our Lord God Almighty wasn't even around? I don't know about you, but I've been there a lot. And I've got to know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He had to be there with me. Because I accepted him into my heart as Lord and Savior, I carried him in there. He has to be in our mess. Never think that you're in so deep that Jesus isn't there. Personal relationship is key in our Christ walk. I'm telling you, Mary was one of the most devoted disciples that Jesus had. He saved her from demon possession. And every one of us in here can only imagine what that would be like having an evil spirit in us, making us do everything that we didn't want to do. Wicked, mean, cruel stuff, causing us to hit our heads against walls and just do bad stuff. And Jesus set her free from that. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And Mary got set free when he cast that evil spirit out of her. Mary has devoted her saved life to Jesus. She knows everything he stands for. She served him. She followed him. She stayed close to him. And here she is at the grave. And he's gone. And she's still seeking him. How much better than that does it get for a Christ follower? Boy, are there some lessons here we all can learn, including me. She's been through it, and she's still seeking him. You want to find Jesus? you got to seek him. Wise men still seek Jesus. Then I was thinking about some of my past church experiences and how religion will argue Someone obviously moved him. They put a plan in place to where the Roman soldiers would guard that tomb so nobody could move him, if we read in another account. Well, was it a young man, two men, or an angel, or two angels there? Can you imagine anybody in your past arguing over that goofy little inconsistency? Well, someone obviously placed new worst press grave clothes in the tomb after they took him away. These are all arguments that get argued all the time. Couldn't have Je it couldn't have been Jesus she saw or she would have known who he was. You know, you can get caught in this religious garb and miss Jesus. You can get caught in this religious garb and not be setting people free around you. You can argue and entertain these bad evils and miss the Holy Spirit and His leading and guiding for your life. And what I thought was really cool, more than, than a, most anything... In the scripture, Jesus said to her, Mary. John 10, 3. I think you guys have got that up there. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Jesus knows our name. He knew Mary really, really well. And I want to tell you guys and gals, we've got to know Jesus to the point that Jesus knows our name. But more importantly than that, we need to know who he is. We need to know his voice. Because there are voices around us every day, all the time, that are misleading. And we have to know Jesus' name, his voice. John 5, 28. 
Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice. we got to know the voice of Jesus. I want us to understand and know that Mary constantly followed Jesus and knew his voice. She knew what he was up to. She almost could predict what he was going to do next because she had followed him and knew him. Lazarus was called forth by Jesus' voice. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came. If he hadn't spoken Lazarus, everybody in that place would have got up and walked out of there. And he wasn't into that. He wanted Lazarus to come forth. And he called his name. Lazarus knew Jesus' voice, and Jesus knew Lazarus' name. And I want you to know, we serve a God that knows every hair on your head, every need you have. He knows your name. Somebody already shout. Jesus Christ Mary, like he's done so many times before, and when he called her name, she knew it was Jesus. Rabboni. Teacher. Rabbi is what teachers were called. <clears throat> Rabboni is the highest royal form. The highest you can lift a teacher. And Mary calls him Rabboni. She knew it was him. In the Greek form, it's only used again in Mark 10, 51. That's how important that name is. It was only used twice in Scripture. I'll never forget calling Jesus Lord of my life and finding out that he was real. I'll never forget it. Him asking, who are you looking for? I said, Jesus, if you're real, just show yourself to me. And boy, did he. But he didn't tell me the rest of the story because it would scare me to death if I'd known what I was going to be doing now. I want to ask you a question. Do you know who you're looking for? <coughs> when you pray to God, when you ask Jesus to answer your prayers, are you expecting him to be able to do that for you? Do you know who you're really looking for? Mary Magdalene did. She's looking for Jesus. Some of us need to find something in this room today. And I've been praying for everybody that came today. I said, Lord, send the right people for this message. Some of us need to find something. We're looking for something so deep and we don't know what it is. Everyone is looking for something. And many have turned to idols, dead gods, and prophets. And I want us to know the image of God that we were created in is what we're looking for. We were created in God's image. And we're searching for that. And we don't know what it is. But Mary Magdalene knew. She was searching for Jesus with all her heart. Many have turned to idols, dead gods, and prophets. But Jesus says, I am the way. When we hear I am, oh my gosh, there's no other name greater than I am. And he's the way. There's only one way to God the Father Almighty, and it's Jesus. He says, I am the truth. How many hear false stories, lies every week, every day of your life? There's only one truth, and it's Jesus. And then he says, I'm the life. We can have an abundant life here on this earth. I can only imagine what it's going to be like in heaven. It's going to be really, really awesome up there. But you know what? We can have abundant life right here through Jesus. If we take him on and know him as Lord and Savior. 
And then Jesus himself makes the statement, no one can come to the Father except through me. We can pray and pray and pray. And if we don't have Jesus in our hearts, it's beautiful. Mary was looking for Jesus and he showed up. How cool is that? Jesus makes an amazing statement. Don't hold on to me. And I think of what? Jesus tells Mary, don't hold on to me. I've not ascended to the Father. I've not been with the Father yet. Jesus hasn't settled in with God yet. He hasn't returned to heaven. He needs to know that his job is well done and his mission's accomplished and all men are set free. He needs to be reinstated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and hear the Father say, Job well done, you faithful servant. All mankind is set free because you were obedient and did what I asked you. Then he'll send the Holy Spirit for her to lean on, to hold on to, to have move inside of her. And only until he returns to the Father does she have something solid as a rock to hang on to, to lean and hold, have hold up. And you and I have that same Holy Spirit power in us right now. If Jesus hadn't returned, hadn't went back to the Father, the Holy Spirit would have never come. And we wouldn't have a Holy Spirit living inside of us. Then he'll send the Holy Spirit for her to lean on, to hold on to, to have move inside her, to fill the void that she has without Jesus. Her Jesus is gone and she is empty, lost. We can't lean on man. But we all have to lean on God. And I know so many people I've watched in my ministry years lean on a pastor, lean on a Christian counselor, or their Sunday school teacher. They became a crutch for their faith. And I'm telling you, before I'm done with this message, God can call me home in a heartbeat. And if you're counting on me, you are in serious trouble. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, the way to the Father, is who you need to be fully counting on. Don't use a pastor or another man as a crutch. God in man form does no good, but God in spirit form says and does it all. Jesus was telling her, I came to this earth as man, and God has resurrected me, and I'm going back to the Father. Awesome, awesome news. When we find Jesus, we have to go tell somebody. We've got a call. Did Jesus not tell us in Matthew 28 before he left, go make disciples? teaching them everything I taught you and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we find Jesus, we have to tell somebody. Jesus tells her, go tell my brothers. <coughs> my God is your God and my Father is your Father. Go tell them that I'm here. Tell my brothers, Jesus says, and you know the religious community has argued over who his brothers are. Well, if you read scripture and study it, it's pretty obvious he didn't mean his blood brothers because they didn't believe he was God Almighty. It had to be the disciples, his brothers and sisters in Christ. He's talking to those that are followers. Go tell them. And here are these guys locked in a room, scared to death. They left Mary all beside herself in grief, locked in a room, and he wants her to go tell them that he's here. 
And I thought, would you not be ticked off that the people you poured your life into for three years are scared to death, locked in a room? No, he don't care. He came to save them. He came to love them. He came to set them free from the very thing that they're locked up in. And he tells Mary, go tell them. next couple weeks we're going to hear of all kinds of witnesses that saw this live Jesus walking around. Without a doubt we're going to know that he's alive and well. Jesus still loves the disciples even though they aren't there and stricken with fear. All of us are called to be witnesses. First to live it out and second to voice it out. Mary is still showing her faithfulness. Toward Jesus. She's trying to find him. She's a godly example. And if it don't work, then go tell your brothers. He's here, guys. I just saw him and talked to him. I know there are people here that haven't seen Jesus. And I know there are some people here that really want to see him. Moses said, Lord, I just want to see your face. There's a part of us, an emptiness in our hearts, because we were created in the image of God and in his likeness, we want to see him. We need him more than we need breath and a heartbeat itself. I know there are people here this morning looking for Jesus. You probably haven't found him. Or maybe he was in your midst and you didn't know it was him. I know there are people here that have seen Jesus and didn't even know it. They didn't recognize him or wasn't even looking for him. I'm going to have the worship team come up. I want them to, to close with a song. Lord, I'm asking the Spirit to settle down over this place. There are people in this room that need to see your son Jesus. They need to experience him deeper than they've ever felt or heard or seen him before in their lives. Maybe some of them have been walking on eggshells. Maybe some of them have doubt and fear. Lord, settle your spirit down and speak to their hearts and their minds right where they're at right now. <clears throat> He's alive. He wants to hear your cry. He wants to hear your weeping like Mary was weeping like Martha was weeping this morning. That cry, that weeping, can cause Jesus to be deeply moved in spirit for you. Deeper than you've ever been moved by the Holy Spirit, Jesus wants to do that for you. Come and let me pray over you. I know it can be really intimidating to be set beside someone and you're concerned about what they think. No one knows. Nobody knows why you're going to come forward. I even want the elders and their wives to come up here and pray over people. There had to be a full seat in this place. Who would not want to see and experience Jesus deeper than they've ever experienced him before. So come up here and let us pray for you. It doesn't mean you're you're bad. It doesn't mean that you're a person that's, that is, has lukewarm faith. It doesn't mean that at all. It means you want more of Jesus. How many know that we can't get too much of Jesus? I know there are people in here that need healing. 
They need their hearts mended. They maybe have uh, had a bad, bad experience with a father, a mother. Maybe a sibling has just beat you to pieces. Maybe you've lost a loved one and you're still grieving to the point that you're weeping like Mary outside the tomb. Come up here and let us lay hands on you and pray over you. It doesn't mean you're weak. It means you're going to receive power like you've never received it before because Jesus wants to weep and be concerned in his spirit for you this morning. touch people right where they're at this morning. Lord, they've come forward. They want to touch from you. Lord, I'm asking you in Jesus' name to touch John from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, John has been experiencing a weakness, a sickness in his body, and it needs to be healed. And Lord, we're asking you in Jesus' name to touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord God, what a precious servant that you brought to us. Lord, you know his need. You know his very need. And I'm asking you to fulfill that need, to give him the desires of his heart. And like, Lord, you brought my gift. Lord, a precious servant, we ask you to touch him and supply his need. Lord, you know him.
Lord, I'm asking you as a spiritual leader, Lord, he's a young Christian, a baby Christian, and he needs strength like he's never received it before. He needs wisdom. He needs a job. And Lord, we're praying you open doors and lead and guide him. To where he needs to go. Give him the strength. Lord, give him discernment because there are going to be forces that are going to come against him and cause him to not do what you need him and want him to do. Lord, I pray that you would bless Virginia. Lord, and have you heard from her? You cause this precious lady to live all these years and be a godly example. Lord, I pray that you Thank you. 
precious name, the only name, the I am.